Hey everybody, my name is Spencer, and in this video sponsored by Sit Down Games, I'm going to be giving you a preview of Pachamama, a deduction and exploration game for one to four players. Before I do, I'd just like to ask you to please subscribe to the Lighten Up Initiative. Those numbers help people find my other videos, which is a good thing because the world needs my videos. Just like you need this video to help you decide if you want to support the fundraising campaign for Pachamama. No, that is not a made up word. According to the highly reliable source, Wikipedia, Pachamama is a goddess revered by the indigenous peoples of the Andes. In Inca mythology, she is a Mother Earth type goddess, and a fertility goddess who presides over planting and harvesting, embodies the mountains, and, you know, causes earthquakes. In the game, players will lead their Quechua people across the board to discover new lands to farm. The idea is to explore, and then with the information presented to you, make a deduction of which type of crop Pachamama wants to be planted in each terrain tile. If players cannot make correct deductions, they will suffer her ire! Which is not as bad as it sounds, actually. The game lasts until the final terrain tile is placed, and after some final upkeep, whoever has the most points wins. So you've got a few main components to the game. There's a scoreboard. There's the board where you'll use your Quechua pawns to move around and discover new terrain tiles. There are four possible terrain types, valley, desert, forest, and mountain, and five possible crop types, sweet potato, coca leaf, pepper, corn, and quinoa. I hate quinoa. But the real star of the game is the Pachamama wheel. This thing is so cool. This is what is going to tell players what types of tiles and crops go where. You'll pick a scenario disc, some will give you longer games, and some will give you shorter games. Set up the board according to the starting information, and you insert the disc into the wheel. Notice on the board that there are coordinates, natural elements, and animals. Notice there, there are two wheels to turn, one at the top for natural elements, and one at the bottom for animals. Hey, there must be a correlation there! So let's talk about how this factors into the game. On a player's turn, they may either explore or divine. To explore, a player will choose a Quechua pawn either already on the board or bring a new one out and move it around the board however far they want, but must stop on an empty space or a terrain tile with no crop. There are some other movement restrictions, but I won't bore you with those. If a pawn lands on an empty space, the player takes the Pachamama wheel, lines up the correct coordinates, and opens the discovery window. The correct terrain tile will be displayed, and the player will then place the tile on the board. They'll then move up their diversity stone in the matching terrain type, and then score points for each stone at that level, including the one just moved. If a player instead chooses to divine on their turn, they will try to deduce which type of crop to grow on a tile their pawn is located that does not already have a crop. They'll declare what they think is correct, and with the correct coordinates lined up on the wheel, they'll open the divination window. It will reveal the correct type of crop that should be placed in that square. If correct, the player will get points equal to the value of the crop, like three for peppers or five for quinoa. Why is quinoa worth so much? It's terrible. So you might be wondering, how on earth are you supposed to deduce which crop goes where? There are 45 squares, and there is only one correct answer for each one. Well, in the game, there are two unbreakable rules. The first is the rule of diversity. Terrain tiles are grouped into regions, which are groups of one to five terrain tiles of the same type, orthogonally adjacent to each other. Also, two regions of the same terrain type are never adjacent to one another, not even diagonally. Each region will contain a series of crop tiles that are different from each other. They'll always start with level one crop, sweet potatoes, so a two space region will contain only a level one and level two crop, whereas a region with five spaces will contain one crop of each level, one to five. Are you following me? No? All right, let's continue. The second unbreakable rule is the rule of separation. This says that two identical crops can never be adjacent to one another, neither orthogonally nor diagonally. Using those clues, you can look around the board as it begins to be explored and carefully make deductions based on the regions and crops that begin to appear. Let's take a look at this example. Here we have a five tile desert region. There are already crops of levels one, two, and three. We know that we need to find levels four and five, but where do they go? Well, surrounding this space, you have crops of levels one, two, three, and four. Since two crops of the same level can never be adjacent, that means the level five crop, quinoa, must go here, which means that the final empty space in the region is level four crop. Now, you can divine as many times as you want on your turn until you guess incorrectly, as long as you have your pawns on tiles without crops. You don't want to guess incorrectly, though. If you do, you lose points and must end your turn immediately. In fact, you lose points equal to the level of the crop that is the correct answer, meaning you could possibly lose five points if the correct answer is quinoa, which, I mean, makes sense because 
quinoa will make you lose points because quinoa is terrible. Now, there's one other thing you can do on your turn, and that's make an offering. When you divide a crop correctly, you will get an offering cube of the matching color. You can only ever have one of each type. After you either explore or divine, you can return your cubes to the supply as an offering to Pachamama. You'll get a number of points based on how many cubes you return. If you only give up one cube, well, you get no points. For two cubes, you get one, three cubes, three points, four cubes, six points, and five cubes, 10 points. 10 points. So clearly you're rewarded for diversifying the crops you divine and saving up the cubes until you give them all up at once. So let's recap the ways you can get points. Aside from the offerings I just mentioned, you get points equal to the level of the crops you divine, and then you get points when you move up your diversity zones. Now let's reflect on that real quick. Remember, when you discover a terrain tile, you move up your stone on the matching track, and then we'll score a point for that stone and each of your other stones at that level. So that's going to play into your strategy. You wanna plan the timing of the terrain tiles you discover to maximize the amount of points when you advance the stone. If you move the same stone up over and over and over again, you only get one point each time. However, if you better plan, you could get up to four points when you move a stone up, earning a point for the stone you moved, and then the three for the other stones at that level. And that about covers most things in the game. I find Pachamama to be unlike any game I've ever played before. First of all, there's this clever Pachamama wheel. I don't know how someone came up with that, and I still can't figure out how much work it would take to design one of the scenario wheels. I mean, just look at it. There are dots everywhere and lined up differently and have to line up in the windows in the exact ways. I give major props to the designer for this system. Now, I've played other deduction games before, and I tend to enjoy them. But what's great about Pachamama is that you aren't given a million pieces of information to filter through. You have exactly what you need to make informed decisions. Not too much, so it's difficult, but just enough for it to be challenging. Another cool thing is the way players are interacting with each other. In other games, players may be racing to make deductions before their opponents like in Pachamama, but here your opponents can directly impact your plans to deduce. They may prevent you from guessing a crop, sure, but they may also reveal the information you need to make a very lucrative deduction. The player interaction is very fascinating, but for those who prefer clean, straightforward deduction games, this may not be a good fit for you. It's also nice to have a deduction game that isn't about crime solving or murder. Pachamama is a very unique theme. I think it's cool that the designer was inspired by a trip through Latin America and the people he met. One other thing the game has is a solo mode. One player will compete against the fictitious Otoma people to earn the most points. Using arrows on the reverse side of the terrain tiles, the Otoma people will move, explore, and divine similarly to a real person. The design for this mode is very well done. Challenging, intuitive, and fun. And the whole game is fun. It's such an interesting puzzle that I enjoy working out in my mind. And I enjoy messing up my opponents when I discover the tiles and crops before they do. I think many people will enjoy this game for its uniqueness and deduction challenge. Now you can expect the game to take about 45 to 60 minutes, but that's all dependent on how long people have to sit and process their deductions. If you're playing with people who are prone to analysis paralysis, expect the game to take longer. I find the game flows pretty smoothly. Since you choose one of only two things to do on your turn, you aren't sitting there having to explore so many options. The game is laid back, but you will need to be engaged during the whole game. Since new information will most likely be revealed each turn, you definitely want to pay attention and process that info between turns. All right, I know I've given you a lot of info to process, so I'll let you take some time to think it over. But then you should go over and back the project and get yourself a great game. I'll put a link to the page in the description of this video. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a like and maybe share it. If you don't think it was helpful, then I want to know why not. Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, don't take the board game hobby too seriously. Just lighten up.